you've never used Docker before, the idea of learning Docker can kind of be intimidating. So we are going to walk through step by step the setup of Docker for a typical LAMP stack. So I am going to assume that you are familiar with basic PHP and MySQL and that you already have Docker installed. If you're working on a PHP MySQL web page, the process may look something like this. You're coding on your computer locally. You're using a local server like MAMP or XAMPP to test your code. And then when you're ready, you deploy your PHP MySQL website to your hosting. Now, the problem with that is often you deploy it and now things aren't working when you upload it because the environment of your host is different than the environment of your local server. Likewise, if you're working with a group, it'll work fine on your computer, but it's not working on their computer because the environment is slightly different. So with Docker, it allows you to create basically a virtual server on your computer, and ideally you set up that virtual server with the same configuration as the server that you're eventually going to deploy your application to. Then when it comes time to deploy, it's it works seamlessly because it's the exact same environment. So let's walk through the creation of a basic PHP MySQL website using Docker as our testing environment. Now to start, I already have a folder called lamp-docker. And if I do a list, you can see that folder is currently empty. And I have my IDE already pointed to that same folder. So to start, let's make a PHP page. And all I'm going to put in here is the PHP info function. So this will just dump out all of our current server configuration. So our first goal is to deploy this to a Docker container. Now to do that, I find the easiest method is to use a Docker compose file. In our Docker Compose file, we specify all the settings for our, our network. So which containers, what services they're running, how those containers work together, and so on. So to start off in our Compose Docker file, we always specify the version of Docker that we're using. So the current version is 3. Next, we specify what services or what containers we want our setup to have. Now the end goal here is to have a PHP web page displaying content from a MySQL database. Once we have kind of that big picture working, we know that the entire environment is set up successfully. However, to start, let's not worry about the database. Let's just get a PHP file up and running. So I'm going to create a new container and I'm going to just call it www. Now when you're setting up a new container, you don't set up the container from scratch. You find what's called an image. An image, for example, could be Linux already running Apache and PHP and a variety of other tools. So when it comes time to set up our first container, we want to find an image that matches where we're going to deploy our application to. So to find an image, easiest way is just go Docker PHP Apache this is the image we're looking for. So if I go to the official PHP Docker hub, in here I can see all available images. And actually what I want is I want a version that's running PHP and ideally the newest version. So somewhere in here there is Apache 8.1 sorry, PHP 8.1 running Apache. So that is the image I want here. And if I click on that, it can give me some more information. But what I really need is this. That is the name of the image that I want to install on this container. So after my server name, I just go image, and then I can paste that right here. Next, 
I want to put some files on that image, the files that I've coded, specifically my PHP info file. So we create what's called a volume. And what a volume is, it connects, for example, this folder. And I say this folder by just going dot slash two. And I want to connect this folder to the folder of var www slash HTML on my container. So if you've worked with a typical LAMP setup, that is where the default web page goes. Next, I want to route ports on my computer to a port on a container. So when I type localhost on my computer, I want to route that to my www container in Docker. So I add some port redirects. And here I want to redirect my port 80 to port 80 on my www container. And we can add this, it's not needed, but if I was working with a, an SSL, I can also route port 443. And that is enough to get a basic container up and running. So to test this, I open up my terminal. I'm in the folder with my PHP info. So if I do a list, you can see there's my PHP info and my Docker Compose. So from here, I can go Docker Compose and up. And that just takes my Docker Compose file and gets it up and running. Now the first time you do this, it will take a while. It's downloading the entire container image and some other possible downloads. But the second time and, af and after that, it'll go much quicker. All right, and now it's up and running. If I open up my actual Docker, Docker application, you can see I now have a a group of containers up and running called LAMP Docker. And I have one container or virtual server up and running. With this virtual server, I can open up the command line tool. So I now have a terminal open, but this terminal is running off of the container, not my local terminal. So if I do a list, you can see there's my files, my Docker composer and my PHP info. And because I connected my, my Docker configuration using a volume, if I create a new file here and we'll put something in here. and save. If I now do a list on my container, you can see that new file is there. So that volume attribute in my Docker Composer configuration connects my local folder to that var slash ww slash html folder on my container. Now I don't need this file, so I'm just going to delete this. And you can see if I do a list again, that file is now gone. Now I can open this up in a browser. So if I type localhost, I don't need to type port 80 because that is the default. I get a forbidden. Now what's happening here is notice I'm not getting page not found. I'm not getting a server error. My port 80 is forwarding to my Docker container, but there is no index page. So it needs a file and the file that I created is php info dot php. So now my server is displaying a PHP page. So step one is out of the way. We have a basic server deploying PHP. Our next step is we need a database. So in my services, I'm going to create another container. And I'm just going to call this DB. 
Now for our DB, same thing. We want to get an image that that is running MySQL. And if I go MySQL, I don't need to look this one up because MySQL supports a feature called latest. It's just going to use the most recent official MySQL image. Now in here, we need to specify some environment settings. So this is something we did not do with our PHP server. And what we want to specify is the MySQL database name. We'll just call it lamp underscore docker. Then we need a user. lamp underscore docker as well. Then we need a password and we'll just use password. Okay, and we'll save that and now if I go back to my terminal now I can close this one. This is the terminal from my www container. And from here, this is monitoring my Docker configuration. So I can just hit Command C or Control C. And I want to shut that down first. So I'm going to go Docker Composer down, and that will shut down that Docker configuration. And then turn it back on Docker Composer up. Now, notice our lamp docker db1 container is not running so let's go back to our terminal here and you can see we have an error so we need to specify one of the following the root password or allow empty password allow random root password so i'm just going to copy this one here and it just needs to know what a, what is our server using for the root password so if we paste that in here and actually just set it to one or true that tells this server that it can use a blank password for our root password. And we'll save that, go back here. Shut it down and get it back up and running. Okay, this time no errors. And if I go back to my Docker desktop application, you can see both containers are up and running. Now, how do I get access to my database? And the solution to that is we can use phpMyAdmin. Now, so we don't mess with our database server, let's set up phpMyAdmin as its own service. So I'm gonna create another service called phpMyAdmin. And same thing, our image here is, and there is a phpMyAdmin image and it's just phpMyAdmin slash phpMyAdmin. And when you want to run this on a specific port, so if in our browser, we go to port and we'll just use 8001, I wanna redirect that to port 80 of our phpMyAdmin container. Now we need a couple settings here that we haven't used before. So open up our environment. And the settings we want are first of all, where is our actual MySQL host? And I can reference this by using the service name. So the host is just DB. And the port is our default port of 3306. That is the default MySQL port. And if I save, and same thing, go back to my terminal, shut it down, and back up. Oh, sorry, I have an error there. Port should be ports with an S. And up and running again. And no errors. So if I go to my browser, go to localhost port 8001, I now have PHP MyAdmin running. 
Now, if I try and log in, so our root was our password, our username was lamp docker, and our password is password. That is going to work. And if I click on my database, lamp docker, let's make a table. So let's make a table so we can actually get some content from our database to our web page. So I'm going to create a table. We'll just call it blog. And four columns is fine. So ID, we'll have a blog title, some content, and a date. Our field types will be integer, variable character, we'll just go 255, and text, and a date. We want to make our ID our primary key, and auto increment. And that's enough just for the purpose of this demo. So let's insert a couple records. I'll just make this a little bigger here. I'm going to go to lorem ipsum and just grab some lipsum to put into our table here. So I'll copy a paragraph and we'll use a snippet of this for the title, make it proper case. And make this look like a complete paragraph here. And for the date, just a couple days ago. And we'll add a second record here. Close lorem ipsum, insert one more, grab a chunk for our title, make that proper case and choose another date. And that's enough for the purpose of this demo. Now, one problem to consider here is that when I shut down my containers and restart them, this, this content is going to be gone. So let's export our database here. And all the defaults are fine. And I'm going to place that into my project folder. So into my into my lamp docker folder and we'll just call this a dump.sql okay and that's downloaded so if I go back to my code here you can see there's my dump.sql now how do I get my mysql container to import that dump every time I set up my containers so to do that we create a volume. Now all a volume is, remember, is it's connecting a local folder to a folder on our container. So I'm going to connect a folder and we'll call it uh, we'll just call it DB. I'll name the folder after my service. And I'm going to connect that to on my Docker. And this is a folder that I had to look up. entry point all right so I'm gonna make a volume of our local DB folder which we'll have to make and I'm gonna connect that to the docker entry point init DB this is a predefined folder that our MySQL container will automatically execute any SQL that exists in that folder so I'm gonna make a local folder called DB I'm going to move my dump.sql to my db folder and we can close that. Uh, save my composer configuration and shut it down and restart it. And we're getting an error, and I just forgot a dot in here to specify a folder local to the project. And let's try that again. And this time we're running. And if I go back to my PHP MyAdmin, refresh, 
it's going to require that I log in again because this is a brand new server. So our username is lamp docker and our password is password and we are in and notice we have a blog table already populated with content. So now let's get that content from our database into a web page. So I'm going to create a new file called index.php and in this file let's just do a super basic connection to our database and get that content out. So for simplicity's sake I'm just going to use MySQLi. So I'm going to connect and when I set up my connection information I can reference my database using DB. My username is lamp docker. My password is password and my database is also lamp docker. Then I'm going to execute a basic query. We just want to select star from blog and execute that query. And then let's just output a web page title. So we use an H1, a title, we'll just call this our MySQL content. And we'll loop through our result. Sorry, that should be a second variable. We'll use record. And then let's just output from our record the blog title. The content. And our date. And we'll just uh, prefix that, I guess, with the word posted. And to split these up, we'll just put an HR in here. So if I save this, now I can go to my browser, open up localhost, port 80, which is the default, and I want to load my index file, which is also the default. So I don't need to specify the file name here. Now we're getting an error here MySQLi function, uh, MySQLi connect doesn't exist. So the image we used for our PHP Apache container does not have the MySQL functions we need to execute our PHP. All right, so we are now getting a MySQLi connect function doesn't exist. Now I looked into some possible resolutions to fix this issue and a couple options. We can either create what's called a docker file to execute some basically command line commands to install the MySQLi library which is what is missing here. I also found a different version of our PHP image. So I'm going to go 8.1.1 Apache and I believe this one already includes the MySQLi library. So I'm going to save that, go back to my terminal, shut it down and back up. And now if I refresh we are now getting it is now finding that MySQLi function. So this is progress, even though we're still getting an error. However, it's getting connection refused.
So we just double check our database information. We are using the DB service. That's our uh, MySQL container. LAMP Docker is our username. Password is our password. And LAMP Docker is our database. So it, it appears to be set up properly. However, one thing we need to specify is that all of these containers need to work together. So to do that, we add a network. So in the bottom of our configuration here, we go networks. And we're going to create a network. And I'm just going to call it LAMP Docker. So this is the name of our network. And I'm not quite sure what this does, but we use a driver called bridge for our network. Then in each of our services, we specify that this service belongs to the LAMP Docker network. And we're going to do that for all of these. save, go back to our terminal, restart it, and refresh. And it's still not working, so we're going to add one last thing here. Our www service depends on our DB service up and running. And likewise, our PHP MyAdmin depends on our DB service up and running. Now, what this ensures is that the DB service will be up and running before our www service and our PHP MyAdmin service. So if we save, refresh, get it back up and running. Oh, sorry, and I just, it depends on, just a typo there, and get that up and running again. Okay, this time no errors, so now if I refresh, that's working. And we are now seeing content from our MySQL database on our web page. So that kind of confirms that the entire LAMP full circle is functioning.